What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're here to talk about another draft prospect. And today, we're talking about an offensive lineman who could potentially be our future at tackle. So let's get it started. No, I got a shout out to the uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome everybody to the video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we're talking about a player out of North Dakota State, but it's not Trey Lance. No. Today, it is Dylan Radins. Dylan Radins is the player we're talking about in today's video. Yesterday, we took a look at Asante Samuel Jr., but today, I wanted to talk about Dylan Radins, okay? For the last couple of days, I've been specifically just watching tackles over and over and over, looking for mid-round prospects, early prospects, you know, that kind of thing, where the Lions could potentially go in this year's draft. Now, there's some obvious questions about the right side of the offensive line. You know, left side seems to be more intact. Of course, you have Taylor Decker and Jonah Jackson proved that he could start a left guard last season. Wasn't perfect, you know, there were definitely some hiccups there definitely struggled I think that's a cold he really struggled but you know he was only a rookie so you believe he can hold that role and then at center we have Frank Ragnall we'll have to extend him but we're good there it's the right side of the offensive line where there's some obvious questions you know I believe Big V will start at right guard next season but who knows I have a video on that if you guys want to check it out Logan Stenberg could win that role you know right tackle then Terrell Crosby could be that guy next season like he was last year it could be Big V you know they could go a different option there I don't really know what's gonna happen there's some clear questions with the right side of the offensive line but not even just for this season but also for the future even if the line Lions have the right guard and right tackle for next season, assuming that's maybe a guy like Terrell Crosby or Big V or whoever it may be, there are still questions then about the future. Because then you look at Crosby and say, well, he has one year left on his deal. You look at Big V and say, well, they could use the out when they have it, you know, in a year down the road. So there's some questions still about the offensive line, not only for now, but also for the future. Okay, so even if you got it figured out for this season, the future, you know, could be a question mark. And it doesn't mean the Lions have to go that route this year, but if they did want to go tackle in this year's draft, this could be a very strong option. I think schematically he fits very well. So like I said, the last couple of days, all I've been doing is really watching tackles. I'm talking a lot of offensive tackles. The same guys over and over and over and over. And there's definitely different types of tackles out there that the Lions can target. But I think this one... The more I watch Dylan, the more I think, okay, this could, this could make sense. I could, I could see how this can make sense depending on how far and how far he falls in this year's draft. So for the Detroit Lions, he's projected to be a mid-round pick. And the Lions, we know we got the comp pick instead of the higher third-round pick. Dang it, Rams. Are you kidding me? But we still technically have third, two third-round picks. We have the second-round pick, which is early. And then, obviously, we have the seventh pick in the draft. And the Lions are sitting there. They, don't, they say, hey, we don't want to use this seventh pick on a tackle. You know, we want to do something else. We want to trade back. Whatever that may be. Then you could be looking at a mid-round tackle, or you could look late. It depends on how much the Lions, you know, what they feel like they have in this offensive line. Anthony Lynn told us he believes it's a deepest position, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he won't look to potentially try to improve there or be prepared for the future. And I think Dylan Radins, if you're not going to go top-run offensive lineman, the seventh pick in the draft, something like that, I think there's definitely going to be guys that need development. Well, there's still a lot of talent there, no question, but I think if you want a surefire, I drafted him, he could start right tackle this season. Rashawn Slater... Those are the type of guys that you're going to have to get. If you wait a little bit longer than that, could they start year one? Yes, but I think there are definitely some more questions. And because of where the Lions sit at seven, and then obviously until the second round, because of that large break, there's a good chance that there's going to be a lot of tackles in that mix where you're going to be missing out on guys that could potentially start this year, including, you know, players like Jalen Mayfield. I really like Jalen Mayfield. I think he's, you know, maybe the third best, maybe fourth best tackle in this class. I would love Mayfield. I think he could start right away at right side of the offensive line, but he may be kind of in that like weird spot where it's like just out of your reach. If he falls, then yes, you could. But today I want to talk about Dylan Radins because I feel like there's a very legitimate shot that he'll definitely fall to round two, but he could fall to round three and he could be somewhere there. If he falls out of day two, I'd be shocked, but I think he looks like a day two pick to me and someone that the Lions could look at. So I don't know, you know what they're doing, but it's always good to know what your options are. So let's talk about Dylan a little bit today. At six foot six, 304 pounds, which is what he measured out as in the senior bowl, which was really good for him because that's one of his biggest knocks his size. He comes out of North Dakota State, so clearly he wasn't playing against the best competition last season, 2020. They didn't play that much. It really didn't have much of a 2020 season, unfortunately, because of all the COVID stuff, things like that. So it's mainly looking at, okay, 2019, 2018, things like that. He started 33 consecutive games for North Dakota State at that left tackle position. Now, of course, for the Lions here, I don't think it's a left tackle type of need. You're going to have to have a guy that can slip the right tackle. And there are certain guys in this class that have played right tackle. There are certain guys that, you know, have done that or they are coming off of doing it. Adrian Neely, who I think is someone that the Lions could potentially be looking at a little bit later in the draft, depending on where he goes. He would have to go from left tackle to right tackle, assuming that you're putting him at right tackle. I don't know if the Lions would want to move Taylor Decker out of a spot. He hasn't played there since, I think, early college. And, you know, he gave him this big contract to play left tackle. Obviously, this regime did it, but the last one did. I don't think he'll move out of left tackle spot. I think he's solid. He's coming off his best season, you know, by grades. But for the right tackle spot, I think Dylan has the 
ability and the skill to move to right tackle and he could be fine so let's just dive right into this shall we? let's just talk about it. the senior bowl when you watch him in his one around one reps he started off a little slow but he clearly picked it up and he looked solid he held his own against some of the top tier pass rushers he wasn't phenomenal he wasn't blowing anybody away but he looked solid it looked like okay this looks like an nfl tackle he looks pretty good so it was solid i think it helped him but he definitely could have been much better he could have been more dominant at that but it's just something that i have to take into consideration is that okay look i mean if we're being real here the comp competition is not top notch let's get into the run blocking for dylan raiden's first okay let's start with that first and i gave him an eight out of ten in this now Keep in mind with these grades, you know, they are what they are against the competition they win against, but that will be one of his biggest knocks. Aside from size, it's clearly competition. In all fairness, a lot of offense tackles I've watched, they've won against better competition week in and week out than he has, okay, at North Dakota State. Really hasn't played top tier pass rushers aside from the Senior Bowl. So that's a very big factor. I mean, when you're talking about, you know, Jackson Carmen out of Clemson, when you're talking about Adrian Ely out of Oklahoma, I mean, we're talking about these guys. I mean, whoever you want to throw in, throw whatever you want. They're going against top stud pass rushers that he didn't go against week in and week out so that's why the senior bowl was so big for him and it was a solid performance it wasn't tremendous though it was solid i think it was pretty good uh but that is again another reason it could take us some time to adjust i don't know that's just kind of like will it or will it not will he be fine will he not so let's talk about though as a run blocker i gave him an eight out of ten it's not perfect but it has room for improvement and it's pretty darn good. All right. The first thing that I like about him as run blocker is that he's scheme versatile. What do I mean by that? Well, he's played both in a man blocking scheme and a zone blocking scheme. And when I look back at Anthony Lynn's offenses, you know, you'll see a little bit of both here, right? You'll see him mixing both. Of course, the zone blocking scheme, play action bootlegs that's set up by the run first, the stretch runs, but then you get the man blocking scheme and he's going to have to do both of those. And he's been able to do both of those with the, with North Dakota state, which is important because he's going to have to be able to do both with the Detroit Lions on the outside. I would say the next thing, and this honestly goes to both as a pass blocker and as a run blocker, but I'll say it right now, he does such a good job at staying attached. I mean, that was an issue with some guys is that they didn't just stay attached that well. They could get that first initial contact and then all of a sudden they lose him and their guy would slip by. He stays attached at a very high rate. Not all the time, but at a very high rate, he has a just a way to stay attached. And he doesn't concern you because he doesn't get super far out outside the, you know, the shoulders and he looks like he's holding. He stays inside, but he stays attached and he can really take guys out of the play. Some of that could come back to competition. We'll see how he, you know, transitions to the NFL, but clearly he stays attached at a pretty high level as run blocker. I would say next, he does a great job of opening holes not because he's some kind of just gigantic mauler that just runs people over consistently but because he has a really good feel of where the play is going and how to create that hole and really just putting himself in the position getting good leverage to put the defender out of the play and he blocks into the second level he's always looking towards the second level as a run blocker he's always got his head up you know first level then the next level i'm going to work ahead now at second level, he can have some issues, you know, keeping up with guys and they'll use him in screens that way, but they'll also use him in run plays and, you know, man or zone, he'll work his way to second level as a zone run blocker. You'll see him try to pancake guys. And I would say, finally, he pulls as a tackle. He can pull block as a tackle, which is another exciting thing about his game. But why not a 10? Because I don't think he's as dominant consistently as you'd like to see. I think he's got the mentality that you want, but he's not as dominant as you'd love to see from a top end run blocker. He's really good, but he's not the best. And I think for him, he's just not as dominant but I think that can come with size. Puts a little bit more size on a little more strength. I think he'd be more dominant, but I think it's something that showed up at times, even in his games that he played at for North Dakota State, which is a very big concern because those aren't top tier studded guys. Usually for the most part though, it's either the guy doesn't go anywhere or he puts him where he needs to be. But for the most part, he's not getting dominated. I didn't really think I ever saw him get dominated as a run blocker, but he's just not as dominant as you love to see. And I think he could add a little more size, add a little more muscle to that, and it could really help him out a lot. Upper body doesn't have the strongest first punch heavy hands it's it, you know it's just kind of like okay here we are you know we're here i'm not gonna usually throw you back with my first punch so i think there's a strength that can be added really works off his lower body strength which is fine but can add some strength and i think he could do that and add a little more to his frame he'd be a more dominant run blocker as a pass blocker i gave him a seven out of ten here and honestly you could bump this up a little bit higher if you wanted to because he was good last season zero hurries of course only over 75 snaps but 2019 10 hurries year before that eight hurries not that much pressure is given up on his side the reason I gave him a 7 out of 10. Well, some of that has to do because they said the competition wasn't the best. But let's get into it. First off, he's a patient, patient pass blocker. He's not looking to overextend, overexert himself, get himself out of position where he's reaching. He doesn't reach that often. Some guys, they overextend. They kind of lunge forward. He doesn't do that. 
Again, competition, I have to keep bringing it up because it's something that can really, you know, hide, show things that we haven't seen yet. So that's why it could take time to adjust to the game. That's why I think for the Lions, it'd be great for him potentially to be able to sit. And if he goes out and balls, good, let him play. But if he's not right away, then he can at least sit and get some opportunities, you know, behind someone else to kind of learn and get adjusted to the NFL talent week in and week out. But he's a patient blocker that doesn't overextend. And I think some of that has to because he's pretty athletic. Not the most elite athletically, not the most elite physically, but he's a pretty athletic player. And you shows by his ability to go on screens and block to the second level, block to the second level and run plays. And his bend is really nice as well. Does a really good job of keeping defenders out of the plate, pushing them out of the pocket. Not letting them collapse the pocket. He has really good bend to force those speed rushers back too far and really get a nice, nice like a uh, horseshoe, I guess you could say, for the quarterback. That way they can step in, up into the pocket. Sometimes land find himself too far back. And just like a top tier left tackle should do, you can see the explosiveness off the snap. And it's something I've actually noticed in Taylor Decker's game when I've watched him is the explosiveness to get off the snap very quickly. He's not laid off the snap. You know, it is not multiple reps from saying, oh, he's the last guy off. He's the first guy off. He, he's got the really quick response right off the snap to beat the pass rusher to his spot and then take them for a ride back out of the pocket awareness is tremendous probably my favorite part of him as a pass protector is his awareness very aware of what's going on and especially against speed rushers there's a couple i saw multiple occasions where he would pick up his guy first and all of a sudden they send an extra blitzer sometimes delayed sometimes not and he was able to kind of recognize that and help both out at least get a hand on that extra guy sometimes he's blocking two guys at once that kind of pickup or recognition on stunts twist that's going to be next level that's going to be nfl type of blocking that's that's huge similar you know in terms of power upper body strength hands not being able to punch guys off. Some of those defensive linemen usually does a good job of keeping his hands inside, uh, but sometimes you can see them kind of win with the bull rush. Also, there's a couple, just a few occasions where he would get, where they would start him outside and then be able to work their way inside on him. And, you know, he'd be a little off there. And there were a few occasions where they would attack the inside and they could get to Trey Lance there because he finds himself too far outside. He may overstep outside, but he's, he slides really well. He does sometimes overextend outside and it can allow rushers to set him up outside and work back inside. He's very aware of what's going on, but that can be an issue. Then of course, like I said, he can get stronger upper. He can get stronger there because I think when you go against a really strong pass rushers that, you know, some of those built guys, guys like there could be a problem there he could be pushed back a few yards didn't see him much against who he played with but if you watch the senior bullet you noticed it a little bit more in terms of one-on-ones and like i said really good pass rushers will set you up they'll set you up outside and they'll work their way back in that's going to be a very big concern for me it's going to be something that he's going to have to really showcase that he can do at the next level okay you didn't see a lot if you watch his games but that's because he didn't play the best comp you saw it a few times in senior bowl though setting him up winning on those counter pass rush moves at his level, a lot of times he could stop that first initial halt and it was done. Senior Bowl reps, sometimes one-on-ones, that counter move where he would win the first attack, but then the counter move would throw him off. That's where he needs improvement. And I think it's something that he's going to have to prove himself with training camp, off season, when he gets to the NFL, wherever he is. So as a blocker, he's a really good player. Has the mentality he wants. Also as pass blocker, he doesn't have that finisher's mindset like he does run blocker. You're not seeing this guy pancake guys as much as you'd like to. For a team that could run a lot of play action rollouts, you're going to need athletic players. You need athletic guys, especially if he's going to be on the right side for a right-handed quarterback. You're you're gonna have to be athletic and while yes he played left tackle and he protected the blind side he was for Troy Lance who was right-handed so you didn't see as many rollouts to the to the left side now if he's playing right side you're gonna see that which he hasn't been so that's another question can he adjust to that I think he can with his athleticism and also like I said his ability to stop that initial pass rush move but also play in space he blocks really well in space and he's got good athleticism good bend I think he'd be fine as that guy that's on the outside helping block because he's already shown it with his pulling ability from tackle not a lot of tackles can do that so I think it's there he has the potential to flip to right side I think he's got a lot of things that you want he's not perfect there's a lot of questions because there's inex because there's unproven parts of his game there's competition levels that he needs to seek and you know we're going to see how he does against some of the best but that's the thing if he can go in and prove that i can hang right away awesome i think he can get bigger he can fill out his frame a little bit more it completely ready year one okay great we'll let you sit behind terrell crosby whoever that may be if you need to step in i feel like i can rely upon you but uh we can let you sit behind we can let you learn and practice get used to going against competition maybe there's a preseason he gets to see him what he does in that and then by next year hopefully 
you can take that level and take that next step and we can say, okay, we don't have to re-sign Crosby or whatever we want to do and you could be our future at tackle and then boom, there we go. And of course, he played left tackle. I think if you want a surefire, this guy can start right tackle right away, then you're probably looking at Penny Sewell, Rashawn Slater, and then maybe you're pushing it with Darisol and you know Jalen Mayfield. But the Lions, if they don't want to go that high, then you're maybe looking at guys that, okay, they could, maybe they surprise you and they could do it. If they can't, then at least for us where the Lions are right now, this will be the time to do that because now you're not in a position where we have to start next season, but if we had to, we could, but we don't have to. We can let him develop behind the scenes, kind of like a quarterback sitting to behind another quarterback, behind a vet quarterback. That's the kind of situation that you could be in right now with this kind of player. Now, like I said, I've watched a lot of guys, more tackle videos, but I think schematically he fits very well. One of the draft scouting sites I used actually, I think made a great point. They said his best scheme fit would be a run heavy offense, basically a power running offense that relies on timing. And I was like, well, that fits the Lions perfectly. I mean, I expect us to run a lot of power plays while well, mixing in those zone schemes, but I know he's done that uh, to really set up the play action, especially bootleg because the timing's there and a the timing offense, which is what I expect the Lions to be next season. Now, he was in a run-heavy offense with North Dakota State. So, again, I think it fits. I think there's things he's got to prove competition-wise, but I think he fits schematically. He'd be very undersized for this, but when he did play those guard reps, at least in pass protection, he looked pretty solid. And I did notice that a lot of times they did have a tight end on his side. So maybe, maybe if you had to in a pinch, he could do it. And he could fit the Lions situation right now as a mid-round pick, depending on where he falls. But there's a lot of guys to look at, so I will have more videos like this coming soon. But I thought I'd start off with Dylan because I think he's a very solid prospect. So let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.